hello friends welcome to today's class of ann and uh, moving ahead from the previous lectures wherein we have went through your mu lms and alpha lms today we will try to see an application of lms algorithm so this application is very important as because we have already seen your mu alpha and steepest descent uh, algorithm all fall in line with one another so this application of lms al algorithm is in the field of your adaptive signal processing and i hope you have already seen your signal processing so we already know that we have a simple linear neuron which is very useful and we call it usually nothing but your adaptive linear combiner we use the word adaptive linear combiner and this adaptive linear combiner is always used along with your lms algorithm in the field of adaptive signal processing okay so this alc which is nothing but your adaptive linear com combiner is a very major thing especially and it forms a very indeficient for, for part of your adaptive filters with any filter you adaptive filter you take then alc will be a one of the component of your adaptive filters i mean to say any adaptive filters then alc will be a part of your adaptive filters now along with your adaptive filters we would like to see how your lms algorithm is helping that means we are taking the help of your simple linear neuron and the lms algorithm and this we will be applying in the field of your adaptive signal processing okay friends so moving ahead as you all of you know that uh, any signal if i have a digital signal it is nothing but first you need to use a a to d converter if i want a digital signal all your uh, signals in general are in the nature of your analog then we cannot process an analog signal using your system so therefore we will be converting those analog signals into digital signals how do we convert it with the help of your a to d converter right so i hope all of you know the method of your a to d conversion a to d conversion is nothing but by with a simple step called as sampling right so these signals whenever we try to sample them are generally filtered and how they filter them with the help of your tapped delay line filters and your tapped delay line filters will look something like this yeah this is how your tapped delay line filters will look wherein you can observe uh, you have used a n number of inputs which are nothing but your x of k x of k minus 1 and x of k minus 2 which are given to your summing element and thereby the, you will be generating a error signal e of k and you are also feeding a reference input d of k right so friends this is very similar to your supervised learning fine so that means what we have done here here we have given n signal samples which are input to your alc that is nothing but your adaptive linear combiner and this adaptive linear combiner will generate an output by computing the inner product you already know what is your inner product inner product is nothing but your input vector which is x of k and your weight vector you can find here separately we have our input vector as well as our weight vector right so if you see in this diagram these are my inputs x of k x of k minus 1 x of k minus 2 and we have our weight vectors which is nothing but your w1 w2 and w3 so what is happening here now these two are multiplied how they are multiplied it's a nothing but your these two are multiplied how they are multiplied it is nothing but a inner product so the method we are using here is nothing but your inner product fine so then very important thing why this inner product is required then only we can compute our output which is nothing but your n signal samples right and how do you give that output it is nothing but y of k fine so if you see the next slide it is nothing but your yeah so what we have as input now it is n signal samples it is n signal samples and what is the output it is the inner product y of k is equal to x of k transpose into w of k this you already seen in your previous classes as well the same equation okay so therefore you can correlate the previous classes and this class and what is x here x is nothing but your input what is w here w is nothing but your weight right so so all these things what we are doing now we want to remove your noise from the signal 
yes that is what is our main aim or main target so in order to do that we'll be using your adapt to noise cancellation approach so this is how your adapt to noise cancellation approach diagram will look yes so here you can see there is a signal source right a signal source is there which is acting like a primary input fine so the signal source is nothing but which one now this one the primary input and what it has always remember when any signal source has a signal and an inseparable component which is n not which is nothing but your what now noise here we have the noise right so we have s yes plus n not which is given to a summer and what is one more thing we have we always remember this should have a reference input and that reference input is nothing but your n1 and how this n1 must be this n1 must be very close to your n0 that means your n0 and n1 must be in correlation that is we can say the reference signal must contain a noise input n1 that is correlated with the noise n0 so even your reference signal will be having a noise and that noise must be what now that noise must be correlated or must be similar to the n0 you already know what is correlation and all those things we have seen in the previous class okay now what is the next thing happening now you have a adaptive filter there then add that adaptive filter will generate a output y right so then what is the work of your summation there this summation is nothing but it acts like a noise canceller this noise canceller subtracts the filtered reference signal you can observe here the reference signal is filtered you have a reference signal here and this reference signal is moving through a filter what is the output you are getting here why it is nothing but your filtered reference signal right so this filtered reference signal is subtracted from the noise input thereby making the output of the canceller is nothing but an error signal so you can see here the output of your canceller the output of the canceller is nothing but your error signal which is nothing but epsilon this is again fed back to the adaptive filter so that there is a correction right so this is very important so what we are trying to do now we are trying to do noise cancellation with the help of your adapt to noise cancellation approach i hope the diagram is clear next now how what all we have then we have our yes you can observe here we have our yes we have our n not we have our n1 and we have the y now how how are these connected with one another these are statistically independent of one another and stationary it means that they have a zero mean you can observe here it means that they have a zero mean right so this e this e which you can see here as the output is nothing but what now it is a summation of s yes plus n not which is coming from here right so you have s yes plus n not which is coming here and how it is getting related with y it is nothing but subtraction so s plus n not minus y so therefore you can write we can write the next the first equation which is nothing but s plus n not minus y so we'll consider s plus n not minus y as the other thing okay so what we'll be doing next thing we'll try to square your equation number 1 so squaring equation number 1 which is nothing but s square plus n not minus y the whole square so what we'll get now a square plus b square plus 2ab so a square plus b square plus 2ab okay next very important thing you have already seen in your all the previous thing squaring only is not sufficient right so squaring only is not sufficient what is the very important thing if you want to obtain stability you should take the expectation so therefore what we'll do we'll take expectation on both the sides of your equation number 2 so once you take expectation what is the next very important thing we have already seen your s is uncorrelated with n not and y that is we cannot correlate s with your n not and y what is correlated n not and n1 are correlated but but s is not correlated with your n not so therefore we will take the expectation and when we say it is correlated directly we can say the second term that is 2e of s n not minus y is tending to zero so why because it is uncorrelated the reason is it is uncorrelated so therefore the new equation that is equation number 4 you will get is removing the 2e term it is nothing but expectation of s square plus expectation of n not minus y the 
whole square. So this is your very important new equation. So that means one more very important thing is uh, what what are we changing actually? We are trying to change our weights, right? We already know that. But uh, when we change our weights, what is changing? When you change our weights, our error we might change. Our error will change. But will the S change? That is signal will change? No. Our signal is kept constant. Only thing we are changing is what now? Our errors. So therefore, if I want to minimize our error, if I want to minimize my average error, what is the thing I should look up to? The thing we need to look is, if I want to minimize the error, I should minimize my turn n minus y the whole square. Why? Because we are, if I want to minimize error, we cannot minimize our s. That is this turn. One second. So we cannot minimize this term. Why? Because this term is with respect to signal. So only thing we can minimize if I want to minimize this error, the only thing which I have an option is minimizing this and not minus y. So therefore we are trying to minimize your error. That means we need to consider our n not minus y and your epsilon scale. So this will not help us. Right? So therefore, if you can see here in the next slide what we have written. Minimizing the average error is nothing but minimizing the term E n minus y the whole square. So on the left hand side, the thing which is helping us is E and not minus y the whole square. So if you observe here, the next term, we will be trying to minimize it. So we cannot minimize yes. So therefore we have omitted here. So what we can minimize? We can only minimize your E of n minus and not minus y the whole square. So this five equation is very important. So thereby you can see when our error will when we achieve the error minimum the error minimum can be achieved when your n naught will be equal to y so that means what would happen when n naught is equal to y both of the terms would get cancelled and let's say for example n naught is equal to y you substitute in the place of n naught y then y minus y is zero that means this term would be zero then the whole error is minimum so that means if i want to achieve a minimum error we need to go through your adaptive filtering so therefore if i want to achieve minimum error we would be so you can see if i want to achieve minimum error what we need to do the output of y of the adaptive filter must become a good estimate of the noise and not it means that your output y and n not must become equal to one another fine so this is very important this is how your adaptive noise cancellation approach is working now where is this applied this is applied to in order to monitor the heartbeats the one application one application i am telling it is applied to monitor the heartbeats of your baby using electrocardiograms right so what is the major problem when we see your fetal heartbeat is uh, we will come to i'll come to this slide later uh, so when you observe the fetal heartbeat the major problem is in the background there is a noise noise interference what is the noise interference it is nothing but the muscle movement of the mother's heartbeat and but one major thing we need to observe here is the mother's heartbeat amplitude is of very large magnitude which is somewhere around 2 to 10 times okay so if you can observe here in this diagram this is the mother's heartbeat the highest uh, spike the lowest spike is the fetus heartbeat but we are uh, interested in what now to understand how is the heartbeat of the fetus that is nothing but the baby okay so in order to do that if you see your uh, uh, diagram if you see your diagram if you see this diagram so you have a signal source and you should have a reference input right so we would be generating a reference input so therefore the abdominal lead is used if i want to, uh, the reference input usually the abdominal lead is used or you use a chest lead which will provide a clear clear recording of the maternal ecg which is the reference input fine so next what we do is so if you observe the waves diagram so if you observe this waves diagram you can see here the diagram a that is the first diagram is nothing but it is the a reference input and we have sampled that reference input at 256 hertz with a bandwidth of 3 to 35 hertz right then this b diagram this b diagram is nothing but it is the primary input where the maternal and fetal heartbeats are mixed 
you can see the maternal and fetal heartbeats are mixed and it it cannot be clearly distinguished in your b diagram and the c diagram we have cancelled the unwanted noise here noise is what now your mother's heartbeat or mother's signal that has been cancelled to minimum and fetus has been maintained as it is compare your b and c okay and here you can easily see the fetal signal is clearly visible so this is one of the major applications of your noise cancellation approach fine so friends please go through this this video wherein we have discussed our uh, application and i'd like to tell please go through the previous videos wherein we have discussed our various things like your mu lms and alpha lms and steepest descent algorithm thanks for watching thank you